Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to my wife Susie's sewing room, which is uh, where I'm going to be talking to you this morning. I don't know how you're feeling today. You may have had a great week or not so good week. You may be feeling a little content about your lot or maybe not so much. Wherever you are, I just pray that for a few minutes at least, you can switch off, put your feet up, have a brew and just spend some time, some you time. And I hope that whatever I have to say may be a little bit of encouragement to one or two of you. And that's great. Anyhow, sit back, relax, have your brew, have a listen. You see, I need to be honest with you this morning. I don't know how you've been dealing with this current situation for him. We're in. But for me, it's been a bit like uh, the sea. Sometimes the sea can be lovely when you sat there and it's just lapping and waving around. Sometimes it's dead flat and there's nothing going on. And sometimes, of course, it can be quite stormy and rough. And then there's everything in between that. I mentioned the sea because it's a little creature of the sea I want to talk about this morning as part of uh, the message I want to get over to you. And I want to talk about barnacles this morning. What on earth should we, or why should we talk about barnacles, you might ask. And I don't blame you, I will too. But just wear, bear with me as I try and unpack about barnacles and how it relates to what I feel God has asked me to talk about today. So the title of my talk today is Bash Off Your Barnacles. And here's just a couple of facts for you about barnacles. You see, they come from the same family as lobsters and crabs and they eat with their legs. There's over a thousand species of them all over the world and they both they have both male and female reproduction organs or hermaphrodites. And like I said, you can find them all over the world and often you see them attached to rocks when you're at the seaside and sometimes on the side of boats. If you've seen boats that have been in dry docks or close up. I guess most of you have come across them at some point or another. They, they appear small and harmless and don't appear to be causing any problems to anybody. And I suppose on their own, one barnacle doesn't. Maybe a dozen or so may, may not do, but they can build up, particularly on the hulls of boats and ships. And when that happens, that ship or boat can lose up to 40% of its efficiency as it's traveling through the water. It causes more drag. So that means they've got to use more fuel as well. So even though they're tiny things, if left untreated or dealt with, they can cause problems. And I was thinking about that while I was preparing this talk and about mindsets. And how often we can have barnacles build up on our own mindsets. Uh, like I said, I don't know how you've been through this Corona crisis, but I spoke with lots of people over the last few weeks in school and out and about. I've been doing some volunteering for an organisation in my area called the Hyman Hub. So this is where we've been doing shopping for people or telephone befriending, doing emergency food bank stuff, all sorts of things. Similar to what we're doing at New Day Church, we have a fantastic food bank. And some of the people I've spoken to, some have been afraid, some have been lonely, some are struggling financially, and some have embraced this time uh, as they've had time to slow down and reflect and spend quality time at home. So not everybody that I've met has seen it as a negative thing. I have to say they're in the minority, but there are some people who are using this time. But whatever circumstances you're in today, um, wherever we're at with the COVID-19, we've got some time in front of us yet, haven't we, to see how it pans out. You see, I guess other organisations, uh, like our food bank or the hub, are making a vital contribution to help 
but most of them were around before this happened anyway. And I guess they're going to be around a lot longer when COVID hopefully starts to back away. I've been through a lot of emotions as well. Um, I've been missing the school children uh, and I've been worried about some of the families because some of the families uh, I work with and I guess our church will work with in other organisations were struggling with prior to this crisis and this has just made things all that more difficult for them and that not seeing them every day has been a little bit difficult. I've struggled not being able to spend time with our children and grandchildren, especially the hugging bit. Oh my word, have I missed the hugging bit. Um, and those of you who know me quite well will know I'm quite a huggy person. So I'll not been able to hug anybody else apart from Mrs. Fielding, of course, has been really difficult for me. I'm enjoying doing the community shopping and I feel helpful uh, about being part of a team, like being part of New Day Church, because we're a team too. But I've also enjoyed the fact that I've had a bit of extra time to spend with our baby that's with us. And I've been able to spend more time with her and she's going soon. So that's been uh, a blessing to me and to Susie. One of my struggles about a little bit is separating work from home. When I'm at work, I have my suit on my tie and I'm in office, computer, and your head switches to work mode and, and off you go. But being at home has been a bit more difficult, making difficult phone calls with parents and attending child protection conferences and Zoom meetings when you sat in your kitchen has made it muddied the waters a little bit. So I've had to change my mindset to a degree as well, and learn to change with the environment. I miss other things too, uh, church, oh my word, yeah. I miss the physical aspects of church. Like I said, I'm a hugger and uh, I've missed being able to do that. I've missed drumming, I've missed the worship. I've missed just being around people and being able to pray with them and talk with you. But hopefully that's going to turn around pretty soon. But it's good that we can continue to have church like this, at least, and keep into contact that way. I need to be honest with you this morning uh, and share some stuff. And hopefully I won't, be, some of the things I say, it won't be just me thinking these things. And I hope in some way it might help other people too. But we'll give it a go. I found myself bogged down over this last few weeks at times and stressed. And I've, the, one of the things I've that's done it is trying to keep up with social media stuff. WhatsApp's great, but I'm in lots of WhatsApp groups in church alone. I have Harbour and Mercy People and New Day Church. And then we have a school WhatsApp. I have a WhatsApp so we can look after my mum. We have WhatsApp groups with our foster children and their adoptive families with family and so on and so on and so on. And then I've got emails, so work emails, personal emails, uh, social services emails, Facebook posts, text messages, and so on. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, my phone just pings and pings and pings at times. And I found myself feeling a bit guilty because I haven't always responded to things. I haven't always read things. I might have missed sometimes a prayer message. I might have missed a message on a WhatsApp page or somebody might have sent me a text and I've missed this. And I felt guilty about that. And on top of the things that, you know, we need to pray for, there's so much going on with the COVID, with this recent upsurge with the things that's been going on about uh, Black Lives Matter and racism. And then we've got the, the things that were around before, you know, hunger, poverty, homelessness, modern slavery, people who've lost people, people who are ill, and so on and so on and so on. And if left, I guess, uh, and unaddressed, these things have been building up on me. A bit like the barnacles. And one by one, in my mindset, I've felt 
that this is what's been happening. And it's began to slow me down. These and other things have been like barnacles on my mindset, my emotions, my thought patterns, and even my faith. There, I've said it. I've let the cat out of the bag this morning. I've struggled at times to connect with God. And I've had to repent many times to him for that. You see, there are our own personal barnacles we have. Like the negative, negative mindsets and attitudes. And sometimes they, on the surface, they don't appear as big things. They just appear as small things that can be a bit challenging. There's things like, for me, a little judgmental thought here and there, a misjudged action, a throwaway comment, spending time on a TV programme that's not particularly awesome, a lingering session on Facebook where you're flicking and flicking and flicking through. I know not everybody does that. That's probably just me. Spending time looking at uh, other people's lives and attitudes and maybe judging them and wish, or wish judging them. One or two procrastinations are creeping in. Yeah, I'll do this and then the time comes and I don't do it. Or I'll do that tomorrow and tomorrow comes. Yeah, and I haven't done it. Um, a lack of patience here, a lack of understanding there. That's what I've been feeling like and that's what why I've got this picture in the barnacles. These things that can attach to us and have attached to me. And I believe all of us have our barnacles of one shape or another this morning. And I hope it's not just me. Phew, you might say, Gary, that's all been a bit intense. And I apologise if it sounded like that. But I just wanted to give you a flavour as to where I was, I've been at this morning and what I meant and what I mean by barnacles. And hopefully some of what I've just said now and some of what I will say might just resonate with you. If you're barnacle free this morning, fantastic. But you still have a job to do. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But here's the good news. Hallelujah, you might say. We have a remedy and a solution. We've got a way of bashing off our barnacles. We've got the word of God, our faith. We have a truth that can and does and will remove our barnacles. I believe that this morning and I believe that that's the word that God wants me to bring to you today. And I hope it's been okay so far. See, it blows me away. Uh, God gives me these pictures and he's probably give you pictures out there too. Different things that gives me to think about. And he, 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 gave, he gave me this thought about barnacles probably about three years ago on a trip I had in Whitby where I was stood at licking an ice cream on the arbor there and I saw this ship out and I saw all the barnacles stuck on and I just left it parked up and it's only recently that it's come back to me and God sometimes does that. It really does humble me. But the good news again is this, I know he loves me and he loves you. You are the most important person to him you are wonderfully made you are amazing you have been made for a purpose and i know you, some of you might not be feeling like that at the time but that is the truth and it's locked away in here some of you listening to this or watching maybe like me and, and, and struggle to believe these things you know in that case, I want to encourage you to dig in and talk openly and honestly to God and talk to trusted people in your world. They are out there. And pray and pray and pray some more. And then read what you can about what God really says about you and how much he really does love you. You were made for a purpose. I've talked about that in the past. And I truly believe that every single one of us has that purpose. And it's there. If you haven't yet found it, keep looking. Because it, believe me, it is there. If you give me a purpose, I'm sure he'll give you a purpose. I've been working on my self-esteem for years. And I know I have a long way to go yet. But slowly, but surely, I'm starting to enjoy being me a little bit. 
and I'm starting to remove some of those barnacles that's been long attached to me. Those barnacles of poor self-esteem. Anyway, back to this talk. The way we can get rid of our barnacles, I believe, is this. And I've called them the three R's. Repent, restore, repeat. <laughs> repent, so say sorry. Sorry to God for what it is that's been bothering you or the mistake or the mindset or the conversation or the action that you think maybe hasn't been of him. Then in, sorry in that case, say sorry to the person that you might have upset. Your friend, your spouse, your colleagues, your family member, your work friends, whoever it might be. And then restore. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself time with God and do the things you like doing because he loves doing them with you. Maybe read a few scriptures, but not just for the sake of it, but to help with the restorative progress and talk, talk it through. Share your thoughts and feelings with somebody that you trust. Put practical things to place, you know, eat well, try get to sleep, look after yourself. And then repeat. Because if you're like me and imperfect, chances are, more mistakes will be around the corner, mate. More on that pull, on that for comments or choices will be around the corner, and the barnacles will start to build again. So then we go through the process again: repent, restore, then repeat. I've had to do that quite a few times this week already, and I've had to do what God says in two Corinthians ten, verse five. And it says this, it's quite a well-known uh, verse. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. There's also another set of barnacles that's been building up on me. And I shared this recently at one of our Harbour Zoom meetings. Since lockdown, there's been lots of times where I've, I've had thoughts about my past. It's been a bit like replaying a movie that's showing all the bad bits, the mistakes, the hurts I've caused, the wrong things I've said and done, the countless bad, bad choices I've made. These thoughts have took me right back even to my childhood and through to my recent times. And each one of them thoughts has been like a barnacle to me. It's been building up, slowing me down and zapping my energy. Fortunately, just like the other barnacles I talked about, I have people in my world who can share, I can share honestly with and this is one of the good ways to remove your barnacles. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If you are in a decent place, and I've shared this many times on sport before, but if you're in a good place, you can maybe help other people remove their barnacles. If you're not carrying so many barnacles today, maybe you could be the person that helps knock off somebody else's. See, uh, I have a few special people in my world, well, quite a few. I have Mary Wilson, for example, She's my therapist and has been for some time. Uh, God bless and uh, you can imagine what a job that must be. <laughs> but I'm so grateful for that time she spends with me. Bev Redman, uh, she was one of the first people that ever spoke to me in Susie. At, it was then CCF and became a good friend. I'm able to share with her and my Harbour friends as well. And there's lots of other people in church too, and you know who you are, who I prayed with and talked with. And that all that is part of this barnacle removing process. I feel that talking about things over and praying things over and, and sharing helps release them and chips them away. The one person I've struggled to share with has been my wife, Susie, just because I want to be right for her. I want to be strong for her and I want to be there but during this lockdown period particularly, I've learned that it's important to have a relationship that she knows where I'm at. 
even though sometimes that, that might not be a good place. Uh, there are many others, like I said, who, who are there for me, and I've been there for me, will be there for me, to help chip away on those barnacles. Because we need fellowship, folks, don't we? We need fellowship. We can't do this life alone. God knows this, and that's why we have church, because it's not a building. It's a body of people, as you well know. So to be an efficient church ship, we need to get rid of our barnacles, don't we? And hopefully on back of the food bank, maybe when lockdown peters out and people can start coming to church, we might see where those people come in. And those people will no doubt have a lot of their own barnacles. So what will they see when they come to New Day Church? Are we ready to be real with them? Um, you know, will we have dealt with our barnacles? And will they see Jesus in us before we even speak to them? Will they see it in our faces, uh, in our attitudes and the way we are? Because I, I truly believe that people need to see Jesus. The only way you can get rid of barnacles off a ship is by knocking them off, like, like I said, with a big chisel and scrubbing them off or using a powerful power washer. Dave Hurst will probably listen to this, hopefully, and... He's an heavy man and a father of good standing. And I've no doubt he'd be able to tell me other things about barnacles and the stuff that he's seen and how they've impacted in the practical way. And apparently there are uh, chemicals that can do the job too. But most of those chemicals are detrimental to other creatures, so it's not good to use them. So in way, I suppose we've got to be mindful about how we remove our barnacles so that we're not a detriment to other people in that process. You see, I get covered in barnacles, like I said, most days, and I'm far away from being perfect. I am, however, now, day by day, becoming more aware of those barnacles. So I am using these three R's, repent, restore, repeat. I say sorry to God. And if it's a person who I've wronged, I say sorry to them. <laughs> and often that's who's it. I say sorry to the Lord, I name the action or the thought, past or present, and I give it to him, and I remove that barnacle in the name of Jesus. He says in 1 Peter 5, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In Psalm 20, 55 verse 22 it says, cast your cares on the Lord, he will sustain you, he will never let the righteous be taken. And it says in Luke 15, verse 7. I'll tell you, in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not repent. See, I need to repent every day, like I said, multiple times. This is the removing of the barnacles. This is the bashing off of the barnacles. The release from their sticky hold. And then I need to restore. Apparently, back in the 18th century, when boats were made of wood, they used to coat the hulls with copper, and, and barnacles apparently don't stick to copper. And that's what they did. And you might have heard the phrase uh, copper bottomed, which is used to describe something that's reliable, uncluttered. Maybe we could start coating our hulls with copper. And by that, I mean, maybe read a little bit more. And I'm preaching to myself here and pray a bit more and just maybe put some layers of copper on our holes. That way, those barnacles will find it a lot harder to stick. See, we can line our holes with the word of God and the good news of Jesus. And But that needs to be a regular process, I think. I'll be with her. During this season, I've started to run. And uh, well, I'll be honest, it's more of a plod than a run. However, I found it a great way to connect with God. In fact, I'm being honest, all this last few weeks, it's the only way that's worked for me, that's been able me to connect to God. That and fellowship uh, by a jailbreaker, talking tucker and 
hybrid Zoom meetings. That has helped being able to see uh, some of my friends. I believe God has given me this urge to run and, and the ability to do it. And I believe this has given me as of a way of me connecting with him because other things weren't working. So when I'm running, I'm listening to worship music. I'm praying. Uh, I'm singing sometimes as I plod along. See, so yeah, we're getting bogged down trying to read uh, and struggling with all these social media stuff. And then there's the policies and procedures that keep coming out that we, we get emails for and the plans for COVID. And like I say, all the social media groups I shared earlier, things like that. I've said sorry to God. I've said sorry to my father. And I continue to be guided by him and, and continue to, to find some perspective on this. I started off doing three kilometres and then it gradually it's built up. And a couple of weeks ago, I did like 13 and a half kilometres. And I really do like it. And as I'm jogging along, sometimes God will actually tell me to take my earplugs out and say, right, I need to talk to you. And I can feel him running with me. I can feel him enjoying him being alongside me and out in the fresh air as I focus on him. See, I've got I've got mild asthma, but obviously this last few weeks I've been doing it, there's only been two occasions I've actually had to use it. And it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. I've been using my breaths to be like breathing out my, my sin and, and, and my confessions and my rubbish. And I've been breathing in the Holy Spirit. So I've dedicated every run to a, a cleansing We've been looking at the Holy Spirit recently in church. Boy, do I need the Holy Spirit. Because without him, I can't do anything. But with him, I know everything's possible. So I jog along, breathing in and out my thoughts and, and, and breathing in this, out my thoughts and breathing in the Holy Spirit. And that's been my way of bashing my barnacles. In 1 Peter 5, verse 10, it says this. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast. So he will restore you. I'm going to finish with another scripture in here, and it's the last one, and I'm almost done. And it's the one that's resonated most with me. And I want this to be our prayer this morning about this talk, about our barnacles and about the restorative power of the Holy Spirit and about talking and about sharing. And I'm making it my focus every morning. See, we are a new day church and we should embrace every day. But I know some days aren't as easy to embrace as others. So I'm going to finish with this. In Psalm 71 verse 20, it says, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. I think that's fantastic. That's going to be my mantra. And I believe that today and I hope you do too. And I pray in the name of Jesus over that verse for each and every one of you this morning. I'll say it one more time. Psalm 71, verse 20. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. See, when we ever have today, yesterday we've had to let go. Tomorrow's not here yet, so we've just got today. And I'll finish with this final prayer from me. Lord, help us. By your holy word and by your guidance, remove our barnacles so that I can be, we can be with your grace and your guidance, a church and a people that is able to help others remove their barnacles for their peace and their salvation and for their glory. Sorry, and for your glory, Father. I ask in your holy name as our Father God. Amen. So that's it. I'm done. I'm just within my time. I tried to keep it to 30 minutes today and I'm on 29 minutes 43. I hope this has been some use to you today. I hope uh, I've been able to encourage you in some way. And remember, repent, restore, 
repeat. Get those barnacles off. Get other people to help you rid you of those barnacles. And let's start sailing more efficiently and faster through this journey of life. Thank you for listening. I'm going to switch off now. God bless you.